Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Shaiba, located in Shaiba, southern Iraq, and involving elements of the British and Ottoman Empires on April 12th to the 14th, 1915. In an attempt to counter the British Middle Eastern push at Kwarna and Basra, Suleiman Askari Bey led a second Turkish force into the area, attempting to assist Colonel Subi Bey, who had been pushed north up the Tigris to the city of Ruta. Askari used his men to attack the British positions around Shaiba, southwest of Basra. The intention was to push back the Duggan defending British soldiers, numbering about 7,000. Suleiman's troops numbered about 15,000 men, consisting of about 4,000 professional Ottoman soldiers from the Constantinople Fire Brigade, and the remaining were made up of Kurdish and Arab regular fighters. On April 12th, the Ottoman forces unleashed a heavy artillery attack on both Shaiba and the previously defended positions at Kwarna. After a full day of shelling, on April 13th, Askari decided to make an attempt to flank the British forces. Seeing the area between Shaiba and Basra was flooded, Askari realized that the British defenders couldn't call for help. He quickly leapt into action as he ordered his men to start crawling through the gaps in the British trenches and barbed wire in the dark. Meanwhile, Suleiman's Turkish cavalry had been sent separately to attack the British from the front. The idea was to overwhelm the position, and may have done so if they hadn't been unexpectedly attacked by British reinforcements under the command of General Charles Mellis. Initially, General Mellis attacked with his 7th Haryana Lancers and the 104th Wellesley Rifles. But after several hours of fighting, he was repulsed and had to return later that day with the 2nd Dorsets and the 24th Punjabis, along with a whole lot of pain in the form of the British heavy artillery fire. The Arab and Kurdish irregulars were not prepared for the hellscape they were in and noped out of the battle, refusing to participate any more for the rest of the fighting around Shaiba. Suleiman, with more than half his forces quitting in the middle of the battle, pulled his own professional soldiers back to the Barjasiyev woods on April 14th. The British, feeling the need to pursue, followed the Turks into the woods and engaged the Turkish forces from mid-morning until 5 p.m. that evening. The Ottomans did show themselves in a good light that day, forcing General Mellis to adjust his forces multiple times in the middle of the fight. With the Ottoman artillery fire raining down, the British forces found themselves ground to a halt as they started to run out of ammunition and were lacking the necessary water for their troops. The Ottomans, meanwhile, did not relent and did not appear ready to surrender. In a desperate attempt to break the Turkish line, however, the second door sets came up with what they would consider a fantastic idea. They charged the Turkish soldiers with bayonets. This was successful, and they inspired the Indian troops with them to attack as well. The Ottoman line collapsed under this unexpected attack, and the Ottoman troops retreated from the battle. The British declined to pursue this time, as they were exhausted, lacking transportation, and unable to call their own cavalry. The Turkish losses numbered approximately 2,400 killed, wounded, and missing, while the British themselves lost about 1,400 men. After the battle, Suleiman Iskari blamed the Arab and Kurd irregular troops for their not helping him in the final portion of battle. He said this is why he lost, and in summarily on April 15, 1915, he shot himself in the head. Shortly thereafter, the Arabs and Kurds distanced themselves from the Ottoman Empire, reducing the threat of the Ottoman Empire to the Allied war effort. Please join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War. <laughs>